Hi, happy Monday. I've actually already opened this vlog, but we're gonna start over. Um, Nate took the kids out. He is off work today because it is a holiday here in the US. He took the kids to play basketball. So I've got the house to myself. I would say I have the quiet house to myself, but this bird, this bird has been screaming his head off. I shouldn't like press my luck, but anyway, I am reading, um, here Lies the Librarian by Richard Peck. I had a Richard Peck book on my TBR last September that I never got to. This one, so like I, I should be picking that one up, especially since it's a sequel to a book that I did read and enjoy. Anyway, I just brought this one into the house though. I grabbed it at the New Haven Reads book bank when they hosted their um, back to school open house for teachers and homeschoolers. So this one takes place in 1914. This will be my the Elizabethan shorts. I'll have to double check the prompt. My bookmark is right next to me, but. Um, so let me read you the synopsis. This says, Pee Wee McGrath is a 14 year old girl who dresses like a boy, lives with her older brother, Jake, and helps run the family auto mechanic business in 1914, Indiana. All that is about to change. The town library has been closed since the death of the, of the librarian, a woman so stern, even a twister didn't dare touch her grave. But when four young women with flashy cars arrive with plans to reopen the building, life gets very interesting. Um, all right, Newbery medal winning author Richard Peck is at his best with a cast of quirky characters and hilarious moments in Midwestern life spiced up with some good old time road racing. So um, what I liked about the previous book of his I read, A Day No Pigs Would Die, was that it really captures the people and place. Um, I believe that is set in an old Vermont farm. I think the characters in that are shakers. And it was just like a really cozy, that one was kind of sad, actually, but coming of age story. This one so far has been pretty humorous and I'm really, really impressed with how quickly um, and in so few pages you get a sense of the people and um, the town. Um, let's keep reading. This book is so cute and while there is a lot of pressure for Pee Wee to dress like a girl and behave properly I mean what can honestly it's unfair to expect anything much more progressive from a book written in 2006 about a small town in 1914 Indiana so it's about what you can expect. Um, even Pee Wee herself, like when she puts on a dress and she's seeing all the the fancy young ladies, young college ladies from uh, Indianapolis, oh, like big city Indianapolis. Um, and she's so impressed by them and kind of wishes she could do up a little better herself. And it seems to be coming from a place of missing her mother because her mother passed away when she was seven, I think. Um, so that's almost like a sweet kind of sad um, oh my gosh, I blanked on the words. It's kind of like a sad, sweet motivation to be more girly. But anyway... I'm really liking it. It's really cute. It's uh, funny and like a little fresh and naughty, but like, you know, like, like, okay, naughty, like playful naughty. Um, and of course, like homeschool mom is like imagining assigning this to Owen to read and then tying it into like a timeline of like, 
um, the automobile industry and like the first cars and how the evolution of the engine and yeah, I can't turn off that like lesson planner brain. Sorry. Sorry, kids. I finished. I loved it. It was so cute. And like I mentioned, what I really love about his writing is a sense of place. And I think I mentioned this in a tag video recently, like my favorite stories settings are small towns. Um, so the previous book I read of his is Small Farm in New England. Loved that. This is a Midwest story um, taking place in Indiana. Uh, and so it's totally unfair of me to expect there to be like progressive gender politic discussion um, and like, uh, like identity acceptance, like that whole like, but it did do really well in, uh, you know, kind of riding the sign of like acceptance and in terms of like personal, like accepting herself and also, you know, society is this way. I can't make things harder for myself. Um, there is a little bit of pushback. Um, from people who like are used to seeing Pee Wee in her overalls at the garage, which is where she wants to be and where she loves to be. But every once in a while she has to put on a dress and you know, this is what girls do and she is, is a girl. Um, and in those moments she misses her mother who died when she was seven. So that's kind of like a sweet take on it. Richard Peck does a really good job capturing like a sweet sadness um and I love that he also so this town is getting ready for um a road to be paved like the first hard road coming through and there's there's people who don't want to see that change society and there's people who are excited for it the uh, automotive industry is a whole new business and so there's like this battle between local garages uh, for business, um, like the times are changing and Pee Wee has some trouble with that, which relatable. So I love seeing a character kind of cope with um, growing up, nothing staying the same. She loves her brother, but he has to go away. Um, so yeah, we've got the rise of the automotive industry. What paved roads going through small towns did socially, economically. It ends with this like, I have to do research. Like, is this all fiction or is it inspired? Because it says from the Indianapolis World of Sport, May 29th, 1978. And it's a little fakey, I'm assuming fakey news article um, about the first woman to like finish or to place in the Indy 500. Um, it says she had broken the, the gender barrier. And we have Pee Wee now as an old woman reflecting on that. So it was a, it was a really cute story. Um, a few lines that kind of had me um, see where, you know, he's not, not trying to like ruffle feathers. But Richard Peck is throwing these lines in that make you go like, mm. huh. <laughs> um, so Pee Wee wants to be in the pit crew when her brother's supposed to be driving in this race. And um, says, no, you can't, Eleanor, Irene said. Evidently, it's a man's world at the Hendricks County Fairgrounds. If they encountered a female in the pit, it would disturb their universe. Grace cleared her throat and launched into unforeseen verse. Let him on the pit crew. Then, and it's the truth, we'll find the little hussies in the doggone voting booth. Like, <laughs> we all three gazed to her thunderstruck. This was a whole new side to Grace, and where had she learned language like that anyway? 
Well, it's a song they sing along Gasoline Alley. The mechanics and those people. I didn't make it up. I, like, that was cute. So there's these, like, you're getting this pushback from some characters on Pee Wee to act more like a girl. But at the same time, it's kind of, it's not because they want her to be a girl. It's because this is the way society is. There's a line in here. Well, it's mentioned a couple times. Uh, no one can make you into anything. That's your job. So I thought that was a really good sort of message on, you know, self-fulfillment. Like, be you. I really like this book. And I think I'm probably going to be a mean mom and, like, assign it to my kids as well. To Owen, anyway, as a homeschool read. Anyway, that is book three of Shorty September. I think I was a little too hard on myself. Uh, well, trying to get through the fire next time. I think the issue I was having with myself is that I specifically picked that book to be like a very fast read. It is very short, just about 100 pages. And while I was home, I was distracted. And that's an issue that I'm finding with myself. Um, it's a very big point of frustration is that I, I fall into that whole like addicted to the phone thing. Like I'll read a page, pick up my phone, open up apps that like I don't even have any interest in it. And then like I'll quickly like open TikTok, scroll, 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 close, open Facebook, I'm not even checking anything, scrolling, check out Instagram, watch a few stories, end up back, and like I do this loop where I'm like, what am I doing? I haven't like actually ingested anything. I've just been like mindless. And so I'm really getting mad at myself about my lack of focus or like ability to concentrate. So today was a good day. Um, minimal phone scrolling and I I was able to just sit and read. It helped that Nate took the kids out for the morning um, and then when they were home the kids were on video games and I sat in the yard and now the kids are in the pool with Nate and so I'm in the house and was able to finish up the book so I think in my old age I can't do distraction well um, but today was a good reading day. I'm happy. And that's that. Now I need to be productive and organize my house because tomorrow, we've been doing school, but tomorrow's like the first day of like real school, homeschool. Bye.